Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Zuljin Distillery Invitational. My webcam is apparently freaking out, so we're going to try to reset it now. Okay. Big. Rather we don't do this, but. Go. And it's still wigging out, so now I am just a static figure. Well, on the plus side, we do have two teams here ready to go. Lubu versus Throwing Shade. It'll be a two-game set. Game one on Towers of Doom. Game two on Infernal Shrines. And we're just going to delete the webcam in the hopes that when I switch screens, I can fix it. Both teams have given me the R. So here we go for game one between Lubu and Throwing Shade in the Zul Jin Distillery Invitational. Real quick, if I can actually fix freaking out webcam. This is Lou Boo's uh, first pick, first band, Throwing Shades choice of a map. All right, well, now it's working. That's something. Sorry to do this in thing, but it freaked out. Do this very quick. And a Samuro first ban, I'm going to um, assume that's targeted. You don't really see a lot of first ban Samuros. Uh, these 10 teams in this Invitational all kind of know each other. Uh, pretty well played in uh, NGS and uh, Heroes Lounge a little bit as well. So uh, a group of like uh, teams, or like skilled teams, coming together for a little mini tournament here, which is awesome. Second ban Asmodan coming out by Throwing Shade. And let's see what Lu Wu is coming out. Are we going to have a more traditional ban? You're seeing the Orpheus, the Malganis. Uh, those heroes aren't seeing a lot of play right now in our pub games, but instead it's Lost Vikings on Towers of Doom can be very aggravating. <laughs> and uh, clearly... Uh, clearly targeted bands here. Throwing Shade uh, has to ban take their second ban here too. And with all of these specialists being taken off the board, that's going to leave the meta picks. There goes the Malganus, but uh, Orphea on the table and available. But instead it's going to be first pick Diablo. I love me some Diablo. Uh, in my humble opinion, he is, I think, the best all-around tank, main tank right now. Malganus is really good, too. Johanna and Kael'thas. So picking up the main tank, picking up the mage damage dealer. Two selections for Lu Bu. That Orphea is still sitting out there. I'm, is she going to get through this whole draft? Is she... Uh -huh, well, I can... We can fix that. All right. Game sound should be there. Oh, you know what? I know why. No, it shouldn't. Because I... 
have a different headset and I didn't change that setting. There we go. All right, now it should be there. I know what I'm doing. I've done this before. Thank you, Weenus, for letting me know. But we should be all set to go now. Better to fix that sound issue in draft rather than the game. Taronda Jaina picked up for Lu Bu. That is old school Diablo Taronda. Used to be the carrying combo in Hero League back in the day. However, you combine a Shadow Charge and an Overpower into a Lunar Flare, a Hunter's Mark, and all of Jaina's damage, and uh, most, most heroes are not going to live through that. That is a wicked blow-up combo. Jaina and Tronda pretty static, so curious to see if they're going to pick up something to put pressure on them. Now pick up a White Mane, strong support. And the Lunara, not seeing her too much in the meta right now, but Lunara and Kael'thas, while squishy, are going to put out a ton of damage, but they will have trouble stepping into a Sergeant Hammer comp. Coming out for Lu Bu. So coming into today, Lu Bu has played five matches so far here in the Zul'jin Distillery Invitational. Sitting on six points with one 2-0 match win and four draws. Throwing Shade has played four matches, so not quite as many, and has a draw and three 0-2s. They're currently pulling up the back, but uh, I know one, two, three. F Actually, I'm pretty familiar with all of these teams on some level, all ten teams. And they're pretty even in level, so I would not be surprised to see Throwing Shade is actually probably the only team I'm not overly familiar with. Lu Bu is really good. Um, but I know uh, the teams that were invited to this were invited because um, of how competitive and close they were with one another. So uh, we get the privilege, the honor, of going to play on the best as far as entertainment value goes. The best battlefield Heroes of the Storm has to offer from a viewer's perspective, Towers of Doom. Teams are never, and I mean you are never out of Towers of Doom. This, is, this map is Come Back Central. The battle begins in 10 seconds. There we go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, the red team Let here. The battle begin. Throwing shade, we have MJ Doom on Lunara, Mimsy on Kael'thas, fellow NGS leadership team member, Hector on the white mame and her broomstick. Zaldrith playing the tank on Johanna. And Ronin Kitty playing the Artanis for Lubu. Macrota on Diablo, Streakwing on Tyrande, Bandit on Jaina. In the top lane, Alan Hicks playing the Haka and Manning Sergeant Hammer, VBZ, going down some spider mines. And setting himself up for Siege Moan. Taronda there to support Jaina in the bush. Going to put a lot of damage onto Lunara here as she bambies away to safety. So interesting here. Uh, throwing Shade kind of went, sent a hard rotation up to top. Wasn't able to get a kill on the Dahaka. Diablo was staying very safe in his lane. Now members of Lubu rotating up. BDZ. Sieging and Kael'thas having to take a lot of damage. If you're Kael'thas or Lunara on the side of throwing shade as Jaina actually able to catch out Lunara does eat the Condemn and the Living Bomb and there's the slow white main bandit is going to get counter killed. Solid rotation to pick up the retribution kill for throwing shade. Uh, 
What I started to say was, if you're a Norbunara or a Kael'thas, you absolutely cannot stand and fight under the hammer umbrella. They're just, uh, those heroes are just too squishy. Uh, they'll, they'll just really get, pun intended, hammered if they uh, stay under the range there. Boo Boo picking up their bottom lane siege camp. Looks like Throwing Shade will respond in kind. Let's go check on our solo laners here. Looks like Alan Hicks getting a little beat up by Artanis on the Ronin Kitty here. Uh, maybe... Oh, there he goes. Used the Essence. Now close to full life. And they will continue to fight. Meanwhile, MJ Doom in trouble again. Slowed by the Frostbolt from Jaina. Just out of range of the Cone of Cold. Throwing Shade were not able to secure their own siege camp. They were split and invaded upon. Lunara, just off of screen, is thinking about coming in here to help, but thinks better of it. And I think that was a wise decision. A split engagement like that would have offered no protection whatsoever for Lunara coming in onto the flank. A naked flank onto a Sergeant Hammer would have been really tough to execute. As always, triple altar spawn in the first Your altar phase. The Three members of Throwing Shade here. Four for Lu Bu here in the bottom. Minara has picked up the top right. Dahaka has picked up the top left. Now Dahaka is burrowing in. Johanna separated. She's going to be in trouble once that Iron Skin goes down. Lunar Flare lands a blizzard right in front. Johanna forced to walk through it, and that will put an end to Johanna. Mimsy was tongued by the Dahaka. The follow-up wasn't there from Lu Bu as they focus down with the Johanna instead. And now the pressure from the Sergeant Hammer comp really going to build here uh, in the bottom lane, the bottom wall already down. So uh, a slight early lead here for Lu Bu. They uh, have the advantage in the bottom lane. Uh, up about, I'd say about a third of a level in experience. And they were able to secure two of the three altars in the first fave he phase here. Johanna has returned from her detention in the Hall of Storms, back banning the front line for throwing shade. Throwing shade is really going to have a hard time, I think, trying to force their way into hammer. Johanna does not have a particularly good initiation. Uh, though really the best way for them is to get a swap from Artanis, but he is currently in the solo lane. And while we have a little lull, let's go check on it. Those two guys dueling themselves to a standstill once again. Tongue from Alan Hicks misses. But if Hammer is set up and Diablo is in proper position, between Diablo's displacement and bullying and the slows from Jaina, uh, I think uh, Throwing Shade is going to have a pretty hard time coming in. Speaking of Diablo, slamming Johanna into that little building there. And single altar spawn in the second one. Advantage, of course, on the single ones will go to Lu Bu, as Dahaka can choose whether to come down here or not. And that means that Lu Bu can and really make the decision that they think is best. Artanis is working his way down here. So Dahaka can choose to stay in the top lane, or he can choose to come down. Now here comes the Dahaka. Streak Wing will get the channel on the backside. No members of Throwing Shade fall, but that was the advantage of Dahaka at its finest. And now rather than rotating back into lanes, Lubu is going to lay siege to the bottom flight lane. However, Living Bomb passed through all of the members of Lubu. And it did damage on Diablo and Jaina. Diablo now in trouble. A Lunar Flare for the peel may have saved Diablo, but now Dahaka in trouble. Forced to pop his essence and run through the bush. So a good solid defense. Living Bomb getting a lot of value. And that was actually a 4v5 defense for throwing shade. While Artanis was double soaking. So this is going to be a wave of missed soak here for Lubu. A small victory for Throwing Shade as they attempt to catch back up uh, in level. And, and I think that exchange really helped them. Sergeant Hammer has sieged up. He has his hover mode, and they're posturing for an invasion. However, this time Throwing Shade able to secure the Bruiser Camp and move their way to safety.
Level 10 is nearly online for Lubu. We will see those here momentarily. Just in time for a double altar spawn. It's going to be close if Throwing Shade is able to get their level 10s uh, before uh, they have to go battle for these altar phases. It is going to be a Lightning Breath, Isolation, Water Elemental, um, the Cannon, the Gun, out of Sergeant Hammer, and Shadow Stalk out of Toronto. And for Throwing Shade, Blessed Shield by Johanna. I believe that is Scarlet Aegis. It is for Whitening. Um, purification Salvo. Or, sorry, Suppression Pulse for Artanis. Leaping Strike for Lunara. And Phoenix for Kael'thas. Both teams trade out, but Hammer the first to fall. Throwing Shade getting their first big momentum of this game, getting the kill on the Sergeant Hammer. Diablo now in trouble, condemned, slow. Isolation goes out on the Johanna, doing everything they can to get him alive. Big swap lands on the Diablo. However, Kael'thas is in a world of trouble. If they turn that elemental onto Kael'thas, they might get him, but it does get Lunara, who is once again traded out for Jaina and Tehran. So a three for one exchange in favor of throwing shade. <laughs> Experience now dead even for both teams, and here comes the invasion. Great call here by throwing shade. They are a couple of men up with uh, Johanna and Kalthos. They should be able to burn this objective pretty fast. However, sieging in the bushes just out of range is Hammer, and here comes Dahaka. He is gonna have a crack at Kalthos. The tongue misses. Mimsy lived to see another day. It would have been pretty tough for Mimsy to get out of that had the tongue landed with a Dahaka and a hammer nearby to follow up. So throwing shade has actually caught and surpassed uh, Lubu in level and experience. Diablo taking a ton of damage again, forced to retreat. Jaina caught out by the Blessed Shield, leaping strike number one, leaping strike number two. MJ Doom finishing off the Jaina. And, count, and uh, I should say a throwing shade here with a lot of momentum moving forward. Still behind in core health, uh, but the momentum certainly favoring them right now, as is the experience. Artanis channeling the mid one or here will momentarily. Lunara on the bottom, and Lubu is going to be hard pressed to contest both of these. Bottom one is secured. Lubu posturing, and they will not contest. Level 13 and 8 tower shots for throwing shade. 24 to 24 in experience. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why Towers of Doom is the best map in the game for competitive viewing experience. Mimsy eats about two-thirds of of a blizzard. Lunara goes down. Ector is going to be in trouble. He is not getting out of this. No. Down goes White Main. So throwing Shade trying to leverage their momentum and really push in that bottom lane, but it is really difficult to siege into a hammer. Lu Bu fending strong, taking out two. Now we'll invade the siege camp of throwing Shade. And I think this bottom tower might go down here. You're going to have the mercs coming in. One goes in, two go in, three go in, plus a sergeant hammer and a Jaina. This fort is gone. And the uh, bottom lane fort on Towers of Doom is very valuable uh, with the double merc pressure and i'd like to see lubu grab this and they are so these uh this siege giants will push down the bottom lane straight toward the core after a little bit of a walk uh, at the same time the triple altar spawn is happening so throwing shade here uh, at a macro disadvantage to be sure flashlight goes out uh, hammer is still sieged both of the solo laners are still in the solo lane, so neither, neither team is in position to grab either of the top altars. This fight hoe is breaking out. There goes the gun. Kael'thas is slammed into the wall. He is able to get out. Lightning Breath completely zoning away White Mane, but it's actually Jaina who goes down to the Lunara. 
throwing shade, living on the razor's edge, but taking control of this battle. Welly is wailing on White Mane, Ector on the backside. Now here comes Alan Hicks. Can Ellie finish off Ector? No. One goes down. Kale Foss is tongued. And that was a pretty big victory there uh, for, for throwing shade. It's going to allow them uh, to take back this uh, bottom bell tower. Uh, won the team fight as well. Now Lunara has switched into to solo lane uh, with Artanis here in the bottom already. And down goes the bottom bell tower. I have opened a tunnel near our core. That last team so fight, Mimsy on Kael'thas and Ector on White Man were so what? close to dying. I, could do that. I, I think I they they really well. fixated on finishing off those kills and they kind of let Lunara slip through to the back line and, and blow up that Jaina because they were so fixated on the low health Kael'thas and the low health White Man. Securing that first kill onto a Jaina was big time. 16s are here for throwing shade. Not quite yet for Lubu. Those will arrive any minute. Teams continue to posture. Artanis is top. All members of Lubu in the bottom half of the map. There goes the cannon from Sergeant Hammer. Members of throwing shade backing out of that umbrella. They do not want to fight into a choke, into a Sergeant Hammer umbrella. Lubu posturing around the siege camp. They are getting aggressive. Throwing Shade knows they're here. However, the burn was so fast, they're not going to be able to do anything out. Shadow Charge and goes out onto the Nara. And this is a full-blown brouhaha with everybody pressing their R buttons. Nobody going down yet, but Diablo, the first to fall. That is Souls. He'll be back momentarily. Blizzard goes down as a zoning tool. Artanis not quite able to finish him off. Alan Hicks on the Dahaka is in trouble. Slow coming from the Lunara. Poison over time. The Noxious Blossom and the Flame Strike from Kael'thas will finish the job. Two kills for Nox in favor of throwing shade. And this game continues to go back and forth. Back and forth. Throwing Shade posturing onto the bottom of the Belt Tower. A much weaker Diablo has arrived. He does not have the sustain from the full soul that he did before. There's the chain and the damage. Unstoppable proct from Sergeant Hammer. Blind coming out from Artanis. The Haka still not here, so this is a five on four, but there are no minions to tank this for throwing shade. Swap goes out on the hammer. He is in trouble. Lunara doing work again. Down he goes. Kael'thas forced to pop the shield as Artanis goes down. Kael'thas goes down. Lunara goes down. You cannot fight under those altars with, with no minions. My team found that out last night. We did the same thing and and really ruined ourselves a game by doing that exact same thing. That fight was looking so sweet for throwing shade until those minions went away. Once they were down, that altar kicked in, and you could see the members of uh, throwing shade fall one after the other. And Pendulum swings back the other way. Lu Bu has the momentum, and they will once again likely retake the bottom bell tower. Three members posturing. There goes Jaina, who has very good siege damage. Plus the Mercs coming in. This thing is definitely going down. It's really only a matter of time. Uh, however, maybe taking a little longer than Lu Bu would have hoped. This will allow for throwing shade to get into position for at least a split. One for one, and they can um, they can stomach that. They're they're up slightly in core health. Tongue goes on to Johanna and misses, and the teams take the gentleman's agreement. Five shots landing on to throwing shades core three coming out toward Lubu. Bring down the grave keepers. Experience dead even kills eight to nine. Core experience fourteen to eleven. This one will absolutely go down to the wire. Lubu to continues to control this bottom lane, taking the siege camp one more time. As throwing shade retakes the bottom bell tower, or do they? Johanna forced back. Artanis actually shadow charge, 
and is forced to eat a blizzard, but Zalandrith takes a pause. Looks like we have a lag or a DC issue. Well, oh, while we're waiting for that, I can fix my uh, webcam in here probably. All right. Well, this has been a really close game. Lubu had the advantage early. Throwing Shade comes roaring back. They overextend. Lubu takes control again. Throwing Shade wins a team fight, gets the momentum back, and it's, it's really been that kind of back and forth, back and forth game. Lubu feels like they have the momentum now, and I think. Ronin Killy or Ronin Kitty on the Artanis is really in a rough spot. He was shadow charged. The blizzard is right in front of him, as is uh, most of Lubu's team. So I think Ronin Kitty probably going to go down here unless uh, his team is able to get him some heals and peels. So throwing shade up. In core health, while Lubu 100% has the momentum right now, and at least in the early stages of this fight, it looks like they're going to be in a good position. It was really not a great time for a, a DC, unfortunately. Right as the two teams were coming together, that's the way it rolls sometimes. I am surprised, um, I don't know if anybody knows this because I don't know it. I am assuming Orphea is available in the Zul'jin Invitational right now. But uh, I'm not 100% positive. If, if she is, I'm very surprised that she was completely ignored in the draft. I mean, she has to be available. She's not even, it's been well over two weeks, right? Since she's been out? Uh, so, but she was completely ignored in draft. Clearly, these teams know each other as we had some Moro bands and Viking bands, um, which those just aren't the kind of things that you see unless um, there's a reason for it. But uh, this this game, um, in particular, this one we're watching, is. Uh, is why Towers of Doom is so fun to watch. You know, most of their maps, you get to uh, level 20 or so, wipe the enemy team, march on the core, the game is over, and it's just not really the case for uh, Towers of Doom. You can't, you can't just march on that core. You gotta either get the boss or march the mercenaries in or uh, channel. All right, looks like we might have both teams ready to go. find out here blue team ready and we're gonna count down now ah sorry about that Ronan Kitty still going strong and is able to get the heals and peels from his teammates and able to walk away. And now Diablo and Hammer are in trouble. That Lunara damage over time is getting so much value, but don't do it again, Throwing Shade. Don't tank the fort during the fight. And they do not. Uh, despite Artanis getting caught out with the Shadow Charge, it is actually Throwing Shade that came out of that battle uh, a little bit worse for the wear. They need to force these minions in. Kael'thas caught in the root, forced to uh, pop the shield. Uh, Ellie is in there now as well. That's going to be one heroic down 
for Lu Bu. Throwing shade slowly, oh so slowly, able to get some damage in on this bottom bell tower, but they're just not able to crack it. Mimsy in a very aggressive spot. Diablo showed up to the party and he wisely backed out of that. Lu Bu is just putting these minions down so fast that they aren't able to step up. Now they are. The minion wave comes in, as does Throwing Shade. The bottom altar finally returning to Red's control. However, Lu Bu in great position. Johanna flipped, able to flashlight onto the Tyrande, get the interrupt. There goes a great Phoenix. Lunara on the backside doing a ton of work. Diablo and Dahaka running for their life. Mimsy, though. Prox's shield running for his life, Diablo able to finish him off, but now he may have gone too far. Swap misses onto Jaina, and Artanis will fall. Two for nothing in favor of Lu Bu. That's going to be a big blow. They were so close, oh so close to getting a couple kills, but not able to finish it. And that entire fight under the hammer umbrella. That's a really hard thing to do there. Two members down for about another 30 seconds. Or throwing shade. Bottom siege giants once again taken by Lubu. And I'm sure they're going to invade this one momentarily as well. Uh, there's really not a whole lot that throwing shade can do about this either. Johanna is down here to do her best and clear this thing out. Artanis up in five, and then once again, we're going to have a brawl over this bottom lane. They're actually letting Johanna free clear this. I don't think she's going to be able to fight all of it on her own, but at least one of the pumpkin sappers went down to Johanna, and there goes Lunara walking right in for that splintered spear. All members are throwing shade here. A two-man gravity lapse comes down on Dahaka and Diablo. Trying to stand tall is throwing shade. A big-time blizzard forces the backline. Swap goes on to Jaina. Lunar Flare would have hit Lunara, but a great cleanse coming out. And both sides limping away with low hit points, but nobody falls. Perhaps most importantly, though, the bottom altar staying in the hand of Throwing Shade. Uh, Water Elemental and Lightning Breath online. Really no big heroics online for Throwing Shade. They really had to use them in defense here. This will be a big time 5-on-5 five five Shadow Charge onto Kael'thas Diablo in deep, eating a lot of damage. They're putting so much into Diablo. Not able to finish him off, or are they? A big swap by Ronan Kizzy. Blizzard only there to zone. Lu Bu in trouble. Damage going out. Hammer doing work. There goes Taronda to the Leaping Strike. Ronin, uh, Lu Bu is in trouble. Lunar Flare for the peels. Jaina cannot get away. Welly is on the backside. So let's see what Throwing Shade does here with their 2 4 knot team fight win. Ow! Big time tongue onto Kael'thas. The cleanse and the self proc of the shield saving Mimsy. Boy, he's playing so aggressive on that KT. As the uh, orbital gun hits him one more time, chunking him down. They did take the bottom altar and now doing everything they can to siege into this bottom bell tower. Take that back. Still 30 seconds. So Jaina is up, and once again, they're tanking it. Gravity lapse goes out. Condemn. Much better patience this time out of throwing shade. There's the root. Dahaka forced to burrow away. Minions are here. They will not be here for much longer. Alan Hicks eating a lot of Kael'thas damage. And this altar bell tower is gone. Drag hits on the Johanna. That's not who you really want to hit with that drag. Sieging up from the hammer. Boo Boo trying to dig in their heels one more time. A preemptive uh, unstoppable for Ector. I think he saw that shadow charge out of Diablo coming and Thought better safe than sorry. Condemn and the punish onto Dahaka. Mims eats a lot of damage, but a big swapped onto Dan Bandit. Forced to use the Ice Block and Bandit and Kael'thas on Jaina. Both go down, as does Artanis. The Bell Tower is on the side of throwing shade this time. Very aggressive. Sergeant Hammer chasing down that Lunara. 
And the bell tower will trade hands one more time. Now, throwing shade can actually afford to surrender both of these, but they can't surrender both and the boss. So this is a four on three. Is Lu Bu gonna trade this? I I'm, I would be surprised if they did. Ector, great positioning to eat the owl. And that is a big time trade. And now, Hammer is in trouble. Leaping Strike able to almost put him down, but no. Streak Wing with the heels, keeping Sergeant Hammer up. Three core health for Lu Bu. Six core health. Or throwing shade, great anchoring here by Zaldrith as they make an aggressive play down two members. Lu Bu, I think, would smell this, but they don't. Instead, they're gonna try to go take the boss off the table. I think that's where they're going. All members, though, of throwing shade are up, but I don't think they've sniffed out the boss. They're kind of hunting around bottom and playing safe, but they don't know where they are. This boss is going down, and it's going to leave these core health. Three to two. Next altar phase, which is a solo in the bottom, will decide this game. However, Lu Bu will not have a fort to run to. So by giving that boss, they actually surrender the macro advantage in the bottom lane. Big time. And uh, with the mercs pushing in, and the altar on the side of throwing shade and that's spawning in 60 seconds Lu Bu is going to have to attack aggressively in a dangerous position they're going to have to either go through the choke to the uh, north of this altar or they're going to have to fight into this altar and they're going to attempt to go through the choke now throwing shade sees this they get the swap on a Toronto. great swap I do not think she is getting out of it Huge swap by Ronin Kitty. Diablo goes in deep to try to get uh, Taronda out, but it will not work. Lightning Breath, though, might get two. In the meantime, Dahaka's channeling. Luckily, Lunara realized three members of, Lu of uh, Lubu down make that four. Alan Hicks tried to get the cheeky steal of the, uh, of the altar on the backside. Good heads up play by MJ Doom to interrupt. And uh, that is that is an upset in the standings. Ladies and gentlemen, throwing shade, picking up the win. Over to Lu Bu. That was a really fantastic game. Um, all around, I... I... I'm surprised at the boss call. I, I kind of didn't like it. I wish they would have instead invaded onto that bottom camp and tried to put pressure in that bottom lane, but that was like the first time all game um, that, that Lubu um, did not prioritize and pressure that bottom lane. And the one time they really didn't do it the whole game was the one time it actually surrendered control of the map in a way that was really, really difficult uh, for them to fight for that last altar spawn. So great, great game one. For game two, we will be going to an oldie but a goodie, Infernal Shrines. And this will be Uh, this will be Throwing Shade's first pick, Lu Bu's choice of map. All right, so it looks like one of these guys is going to have to go AFK for a few minutes. So we're going to hit the BRB screen. <laughs> that doesn't say BRB. Aha. Uh -huh. um, and uh... there we go.
And we'll be back here in like two or three minutes to pick up that game too. Stick around. All right, we're back. Both teams almost all here. Now they are. And we will be going in just a minute for game two of our set between Lu Bu and Throwing Shade in the Zul Jin Distillery Invitational.
we had an epic game one and i don't mean to disappoint um but i would be shocked if game two was as entertaining as game one I know I'm not saying it's all down here from here, but it's all down here from here. If we have a more entertaining game in game two than we had in game one, buckle up, because that would be a great ride. All right, here we go. Maybe, maybe here we go. Yeah, we good. Waiting for one more R. All right, now we got it. We clicked on start game. And we changed screens, and this time all of my cams were working. That is fantastic. Infernal Shrines, first pick to the team that just pulled off the upset, we are on a full upset alert. Lou Boo has not been 2 0 yet this season, and Throwing Shade hasn't picked up a 2 0 this season so far in our Zuljin Distillery Invitational. So uh, for them to pick up a 2 0 would, uh, would be pretty huge. They have first pick, they have first ban. So our team's going to stick with the targeted bans that we saw in game one. Or are they going to go back to the more traditional, more meta bands? And it is going to be Diablo. Was definitely a problem game one. He's very strong. Probably stronger on grinds, I would say, than towers as well. There's kind of more chokes. Uh, and the uh, objective has all kinds of... Walls to slam him on, and this time, Kael'thas, back to more traditional bands. No more Viking band, no more Samoro band. Mimsy will not get to play. Kael'thas did a lot of damage last game. Mimsy played on that Kael'thas about as aggressive as I've seen a Kael'thas play. He really flirted with that fine line between... Uh, uh, crazy and carry, and more often than not, as we have a Malganus ban coming out from Throwing Shade, more often than not, uh, he, he definitely was able to carry, but there were definitely a couple times where Diablo caught him or the Jaina caught him in the blizzard um, that he paid for it, but when you're going to play that aggressive style and that aggressive positioning, you know, sometimes that kind of thing, that's going to happen. Lu Bu getting banned out by, or White Man getting banned out by Lu Bu, and this time the specialists are back. First pick Asmodan on Infernal Shrines. The longer the game goes on, the more those dunks are going to hurt. Are we going to see some Moro? Are we going to see the Lost Vikings? I don't know. Two selections for Lu Bu. Johanna and Gul'dan, that is the core of a really fast wave clear four man. Clear and rotate, clear and rotate. Johanna, Gul'dan, maybe the best pairing in the game for that. Johanna, the best wave clearing tank. Hey, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Graves with the host, I appreciate it. We are here for game two of the Zul Jin Distillery Invitational matchup between Lu Bu and Throwing Shade. You guys just got here, but you missed a great 
great game one on Towers of Doom that went all the way down to the wire. Throwing shade, pulling off the upset over a higher in the standings, Lu Bu. And we are here for the second game of the two game set on Infernal Shrines. Throwing shade, ba uh, selecting Muradin and Stukov. And another mage ban coming out for Lu Bu. No Jaina. Thanks, Grave, for the uh, raid. Always appreciate it. Hope you guys uh, stick around. If game two is anything like game one, it's going to be worth the 15 to 20 minutes because that was an absolute barn burner back and forth, back and forth. Um, at the end, both teams had to fight over the last altar. Whichever team captured it wins the game. Uh, it was a really entertaining set. Anna going to be banned out by throwing shade. And now we have two selections coming out for Lubu. And it is going to be Rhaegar and Dahaka again. Dahaka had great value in game one. Rhaegar is not a support we're really seeing a whole lot of in the meta right now, but the Ancestral is still huge. And there's the Orphea that I was wondering about. All of game one went completely through the draft with a Kael'thas and a Jaina banned out. They're like, well, I guess we'll take Orphea. I think she's really strong right now. She's really good. And a Leoric, however, if you're not going janitor skin Leoric, I'm here to tell you, you're doing it wrong. Leoric and Orphea to round out the comp for throwing shade. And Cassia. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about the Cassia pick. Really, you want to take Cassia into auto attackers, and there's, there's really not a lot of auto attackers for the side of throwing shade. For trait value, not going to get a whole lot of value... That's a really interesting selection. I'm curious if they had something in particular in mind with that Cassia, or was it a comfort pick? Game two on Infernal Shrines. Um, I'm gonna have to say, I'm, I'm pulling for throwing shade. Uh, everyone loves an upset, and uh, I know the guys in Lubu pretty well. Um, I'm going I'm to reword that, actually. I'm not pulling for throwing shade. I'm pulling for another game one. It's just like that. That was so much fun. Um, and honestly, I don't know if I can pull for a team that does not use Janitor Leo skin. Right? A skin of the game? Anyone? All right, the blue team, Lubu, trying to avoid their first 0-2 of the season. Streakwing on Rhaegar, Bandit playing Gul'dan, Alan Hicks back on the Dahaka, Macrota on Johanna, and Bandit playing the Cassia. On the side of Throwing Shade, Mimsy moving from Mage to non-Janitor Skin, Leoric, Hector, <laughs> on the Orphea, MJ Doom on the Amos Asmodan, Zaldrith on Muradin, and still finishing his sandwich, Ronin Kitty playing Stuka. So of course, anytime there's an Asmodan, the longer this game goes, the more he's allowed to stack, the faster they stack him in the beginning, the more powerful he's going to become. So it will be interesting to watch the Asmodan factor. This is a 5 on 4. The Auric is already in the top lane. Speaking of dunks, there it is. As Throwing Shade having no compunction whatsoever about engaging in here to this 5 on 4. And uh, they did okay for themselves. Jahaka will be going into the top lane square off with the Leoric. We'll try to check into those solo laners from time to time. I want to make sure those guys aren't ignored. Four man's clashing one more time. Both globes secured by throwing shade as they clear two waves and then they will rotate mid I assume. They really want to focus on stacking that Asmodan. No value on that globe there, though. Go ahead and check in on our soul layers again. It looks like Mimsy getting the uh, 
Better of Alan Hicks. Now, Leoric is going to get a lot stronger as a solo laner once he gets Neil Peasants at four. So if Alec Hit, Alan Hicks on Dhaka wants to get some value against that Leoric, it's three four is when you really want to get that value. So the four men rotations matching each other pretty well. Johanna Gul'dan <laughs> matching the Asmodan and Orphea. Stormbolt goes out on the Gul'dan, also smacks him on his way out for his trouble. Need a team really looking at the uh, Merc Camps just yet, and as I say that, Ector tasked with starting his Siege Camp helped by Stukov, and now Asmodan while Muradin soaks the lane. On the other side, Boo Boo has taken their Mercenary Camp as well, so these teams will match each other in the macro. The four mans basically playing each other even. Uh, top lane, see, Dahaka is actually doing slightly better. If you can dodge that W on the Orc, or the Orc misses that Drain Hope, um, that really lowers his sustain. Speaking of, and there's the Burrow to cancel that right away. Great play by Alan Hicks. Looks like the mid lane siege camp will be cleared out by Lubu first. It's Alandrith stacking that Storm Bolt at the expense of Kul'dan. First objective will be top lane. Both teams will be there momentarily. Lubu with the slight positional advantage. York the only one there for the side of Chrome Shade. And now he's in trouble. Has to Wraith walk away to avoid the Dahaka. Not sure if he has a tap yet. Or maybe just kind of waiting a minute for the heals to kick in. Muradin checking the bush. There goes the Drain Hope, partially killing up Nimsy. Silence onto the Johanna. There goes the Grove from the Asmodan. That Guban Dot is really stacking up, though, as the front line and throwing shade is uh, really taking a lot of poke. Uh, neither C team able to secure a kill quite yet as Johanna and Muradin both, both forced to go in full retreat. Ector able to use that mobility and dart away. Globe not quite able to finish off Rhaegar, but can Muradin do it? No, he escapes with 67 hit points, does Rhaegar. And I think this is going to slowly, oh so slowly, go over to the side of throwing shade here. I think uh, Stukov's healing is just a little bit stronger at this point in the game. So while the damage was pretty equal coming out from these two sides, the Stukov healing better serving his team. However, they only need one more as Lu Bu able to steal that last Shrine Guardian with the poke from the Gul'dan. They were able to leverage the fact that they were there first and Leoric was a little bit low to get the objective. Neither team sending somebody. Now, there goes Dahaka. So Dahaka is in the mid lane to soak, but nobody from Throwing Shade has matched that movement yet. So this is going to be a small XP soak advantage for the side of Boo Boo until Asmodan gets down there, and there he goes. So game very even thus far. Asmo trying to take in position, or put himself in position to double soak, I should say, as well as stack as much as he can. Currently sitting on 66. Tongue does go out, lands on the Asmo, but no teammates here to follow up. And both teams uh, back in lane. I. Boo is it I, I hope they don't grab this and they're going to with the objective already in the top lane I kind of would have liked to have left that there uh, now Muradin in bush position here they might catch Gul'dan Gul'dan runs into Muradin but his teammates too far away to follow up on any kind of initiation the Orc and Dahaka are on the top now uh throwing shade needs to be really careful here that's a great choke for the Asmo and the Silence, but Dahaka can burrow in at any time. Leoric does not have that option. So if they call Dahaka down here, uh, it would be a five on four in a real hurry there. But they're holding strong, trying to steal this camp. A lot of damage coming out from that Gul'dan, but that Silence is in the perfect spot. 
They do take it, but nobody stands on the point from throwing shade. They actually took all the aggro, killed all the mercenaries, and then didn't have the health to hold it. Stukov actually goes down in the retreat, and Dahaka lands the tongue onto Mimsy, and Mimsy goes down as well. Great play by Alan Hicks getting the solo kill, and uh, this fort is going to go down soon unless Throwing Shade sends some kind of reinforcements up there with the Mercs and the Leo kill. Lu Bu really in control of this map now there. Invading the siege camp. They have their level 10s, and it is going to be Ancestral Healing, Isolation, Valkyrie, not Ball Lightning, uh, which, I mean, if you time it right on a stationary Stukov when he's channeling his Lurking Arm, you definitely get some value out of a Valkyrie. Of course, Horrify on Gul'dan because he only has one heroic ability, and Blessed Shield and Johanna. Throwing Shade, picking up their heroic abilities just in the nick of time. It's going to be Avatar, Flailing Swipe, Crushing Jaws, Blackpool, and Entomb coming out by Lord. Muradin cut a little far forward, but he is Muradin, so he's not going to care that much. In the top lane, in the meanwhile, Throwing Shade did what I asked them to do. They got that camp during the objective to let it push during, and Mimsy is really pushing Alan Hicks back there. Uh, however, Throwing Shade forced to clear bottom. And with Johanna Gul'dan and a Rhaegar even, we haven't talked about it, but Rhaegar for a support has really solid shrine, uh, shrine clear. And by the time Throwing Shade has gotten up here, they're down 23 Shrine Guardians to 1. So they really have to force them off or they're going to lose again. There goes the Valkyrie. Uh, hits on the Stukov into the Horrify and Stukov is going to go down. That Stukov, the first fall. Dan in a lot of trouble, but the Ancestral goes down on him. Hector now in trouble too. And this uh, altar almost certainly, barring some kind of miracle, going to go over to the side of Boo Boo. Throwing Shade really has to back up here. Four unanswered kills for Boo Boo. An Arcane Punisher, probably the most powerful of the three. Marching down the mid lane. Uh, Muradin missed the pull, now he gets it, pulls it over the wall and into the defensive structures. Hector trying to poke away. Kahaka is already in the top lane. So early game so far, very much in favor of Lubu. Uh, Mimsy eating a lot of lasers, you don't want to go down to the lasers, he gets away with about 110 health. And the rotation from Lubu. They're just going to come up here and finish off this fort, it looks like. Kakra, uh, throwing shade is coming up. I don't think they're going to be here in time. They don't think so either. They just changed their mind and left. Blue team has destroyed a fort. Instead, opting to put some counter pressure in the bottom lane. Lubu is about to have their 13s. They're coming down now. Uh, however, if... Uh, Look at this, Lubu said, nah, we don't need to defend bottom. They're just going to go ahead and rip this uh, mid-fort as well. Throwing shade, not having any part of that. They've disappeared off the map. Lubu withdrawing accordingly. What I started to say is this game goes long, and those globes start to stack. One globe onto a Gul'dan, a Cassia, or a Rhaegar can really be pretty brutal. There goes the Entomb onto Alan Hicks. Now his burrow is already down. A nice peeling Horrify. No, there's the crushing jaws, but it missed some anti-synergy with flailing swipe. Hector looked like he had a three or four man crushing jaws there. Right when Ronin Kitty hit the disengaging flailing swipe and knocked everyone out of there. Feels bad, man. Throwing shade, not wanting to give this fort up without an answer. However, it goes down. Alan Hicks taking some damage as he limps away. And it's big time structure lead for Lu Bu. And with the gameplay changes, um, you're going to start to feel the pressure when you can't reciprocate um, the structural damage as Lu Bu just taking everything on the map. They're going to have double Merc Wave pressure mid. And then while. Throwing Shade clears that out mid. They're going to take bottom, and I imagine pressure bottom fort. They need to have three. Now, they're not even going to worry about the uh, Merc. They're just going to come on in. And uh, if they were to take this bottom fort, 
You know, I know one catapult every three waves doesn't seem like a lot, but when it's one catapult every three waves in all of the lanes and you don't have um, your own cat spawning, that, that pressure does build up fast. And look at this mid lane pressure. This is going to... This is a Kata, and one and a half or one and two thirds Merc camp. If throwing Shade doesn't respond to that, it's going to start doing a lot of work. Here they go. Now I wonder if Lubu is going to stay down here and wrap this up. They'll probably leave Dahaka here to put some pressure on this bottom fort, and they will. While they wrote up, uh, rotate up to the shrine. This is the place where throwing Shade needs to get a fight. They want a fight. Prior to level 16, Asmo is playing with Dahaka in the bottom lane, trying to keep this up. Burrow to safety. Four on four on the top, but Dahaka can come down any minute now. Asmo Dan, not so much. And there's Dahaka. He's pretty low, though, so he kind of backed away to tap and then decided not to as this fight broke out. Asmo Dan is on his way. Throwing shade does not seem to mind the five on four as Asmo is coming. A great juke by Ector on the Valkyrie. So Valkyrie is down. There goes the glow from Asmodan. Alan Hicks got burned super fast. The Crushing Jaws gets a ton of value, but the Peels coming out from the Horrifying Gul'dan completely turns that fight around. Orphea and Leoric both fall. Lubu on their way to securing their third consecutive John Cena here in Game 2. There it is. Level 16 is here. The Frozen Punisher. Poor Lu Bu is here. And while this... The uh, camp picked up by... Throwing Shade was really more of a, uh, a denial at that point. They're not going to get any value out of it, but they will keep Lu Bu from picking it up at the same time. There goes the bait over the wall. Uh, try not to when you're... Oh, whoa, sorry. Woo, 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 woo. When you're baiting that Punisher over, try not to let more than one person eat that stun. It's, it's uh, just free damage. Make sure only one person eats that. Asmo caught down, and John Cena there to follow up. Throwing shade in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Baja. A double host tonight. You guys have arrived at the end of the game between... Blue Boo and Throwing a Shade, game two of the Zul Gin Distillery Invitational matchup between two teams. Blue Boo, the second game, has uh, been all of them. Blue team in complete control. Eight on the cancer kills. All of their structures currently up. Complete and total control of the map. Uh, throwing shade here needs to make something happen. They were so close that last team fight. Ector landed a really nice crushing jaws. But the ghoul Dan just came in with that big time horrify, negated the engagement, and they went to turn the fight around. Boo Boo taking the bottom fort now as well. So there is a lot of pressure on this map. For throwing shade to deal with full catapult pressure in the top lane. Periodic catapults mid and bot plus merc camps as well. Uh, they want to do everything they can to clean up this map pressure uh, and maintain these lanes before the next objective if they can. They don't want to have to Uh, worry about Katas pushing towards keep or Katas pushing towards core during the objective. So as safely as they can, they want to push these lanes out so they can really go whole hog in on the objective. Five on five. It should be pre-20. It's going to be the best chance that they get to uh, put a dent into this game as this next objective. Dahaka, great decision here. Babysitting the camp, waiting for the objective. Murden here in a flanking position. Stormbolt misses. Yorick not here, neither is Orphea. So uh, throwing shade, doing what I suggested. They are maintaining the lanes nicely. They are pushed out fairly far. Nahaka picking up the top lane pressure. 
Mark's now marching down that lane with the catapults. Bjork is going to be forced to stay up there. Not sure what Lu Bu is doing here. Is this a bait? There's a hard flank coming from Throwing Shade. There's the jump in the Storm Bolt. And Ector is in trouble. He is able to juke away to safety, but that cool Dan damage is just too much. Ector the first to fall. Another big Horrify. And now Throwing Shade is just doing everything they can to not lose the game right here. Two members down, unable to secure a kill yet again. Uh, that was a very aggressive flank trying to sign something pre-20, but they just forfeited the objective, essentially. And they're, they're really in a rough spot. Uh, they're going to need to win multiple team fights back to back to back to uh, come back in this game realistically. Waiting patiently for Stukov to respawn, and then they will defend their mid keep. Boo Boo, having no part in this, though, want to make sure that this camp is not being taken, and now they're simply invading it. They're going to take it over and have pressure in the top with catapults and this cruiser camp. Going to have John Cena marching down the mid lane, and here's a bush party. That I don't know if they're going to try to fight behind this or they were just anchoring. But uh, the Valkyrie catches Stukov on a very dangerous, aggressive rotation. BDZ with a sniper with that Valkyrie, and Stukov goes down, throwing Shade in a world of trouble. Uh, not as it, only is it a Punisher, but it's actually the Arcane Punisher, Muradin, just eating those lasers over and over, forcing the Dwarf House away. Ector trying to get in there, crushing Jaws, catches nobody. And those laser beams are just doing work. This almost certainly going to be game two. Going over to a resurgent Blue Boo. When you look at the standings, though, uh, fourth place team versus the tenth place team, picking up the split is a pretty big win for throwing shade. So a one to one split here between. Boo Boo and Throwing Shade. Let's see. I'm going to have to hope somebody here and pay the favor back. And normally I would like to do an interview. However, my daughter, who I need to put to bed, so i got to bounce out of here. Let's see who is on right now that we can go follow. Or go a host. Well, all right, we're going to throw it. I don't really know anybody that's on right now, so we're going to pick some random place and uh, throw it over there. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the Zul Jin Distillery Invitational Action. Couple of great games there. A split between Lubu and Throwing Shade. Thanks for showing up to the kind of impromptu last minute cast that I put together today. Hope everyone has a fantastic evening and a great new year. Uh, NGS season signups, January 21st. So just here in a couple weeks. Hope everyone is ready. Have a good evening, guys.